I'm going to start then, if we can, we get going. Um, welcome everyone to meeting number four, Monday, March 22nd. Um, it's uh, almost seven o'clock. Due to the efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 and to protect all individuals and to comply with the province's state of emergency order, the council chambers will not be open to the public to attend council meetings until further notice. As noted on tonight's agenda, if members of the public had any comments, they can provide them by email to the clerk by 4.30 today. Please note that any email comments submitted will be considered as public information and read into the public record later in the agenda. A reminder that members of the public can attend this evening's council meeting virtually. This is noted on this evening's agenda and could be done by contacting the clerk by email prior to 4.30 today to request a Zoom invitation to the meeting. And this meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be posted on the township's website within 48 hours. Uh, so we're gonna go into close. So um, for the cl closed portion, are there any uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest? None noted, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Bradrick, you have a resolution for the item. Yes, I do. Moved by myself, Shelley Braderick, that the next portion of this meeting be closed to the public to consider the following pursuant to section 239 bracket two of the Municipal Act 2001 2.1 Treasurer Director of Finance re property matter confidential IT matter applicable closed session exemption, the security of the property of the municipality or local board. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, uh, Councilor Roderick, can I get a seconder? Councilor Ganan, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, we will now be mo moving into closed for a short meeting. So I'd ask everyone to uh, leave this Zoom and join the closed meeting for which the manager has sent an invitation to all members of council and the applicable staff. So after all that work, we're gonna, we're gonna leave and come back to this, uh, this one shortly. All right, thank you. See you on the other side. Uh, let's keep moving then. Councillor Ganan, you have the resolution to come out of closed. I do, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Move by myself that this council meeting does now resume an open session at the hour of 7.25 p.m. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that? Councillor Bradrick, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Or and that is carried. Um, there was nothing to report uh, with respect to the closed session matter. It was just an update. So uh, moving along, we have um, at this time, we're going to uh, sing O Canada with the opening petition by Councillor Rayner. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, a hot true nor strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. May our personal faiths give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. Amen. Thank you, Councillor. Moving forward, um, are there any changes to the order of items on the agenda? There are none noted, Madam Clerk. Um, are there any pecuniary or conflict of interest? Again, Madam Clerk, there are none noted. At this time, um, uh, we have uh, the section to requ uh, request to address items on the agenda. Um, I'm going to first ask Madam Clerk, are there any email uh, submissions that were um, submitted uh, prior to 430 today that need to be read into the, the record? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, so are there anyone in the Zoom meeting indicating they wish to provide a comment 
on any matters uh, in this evening's agenda. I see uh, Jamie uh, Wichert. Yeah, sir, you have the floor. All right, am I unmuted? You're doing good, yes. <laughs> Perfectly. Uh, so just real quick, Jamie Wichert from Deliveries Unlimited. We're a local business. We deliver our flyer package with the news now. I know that's an item on the agenda later. I just wanted to sort of let whoever's listening or be on the record. Although we get painted by the same brush, there's two different flyer packages or newspaper packages. We do uh, deliver directly into the roadside mailboxes in the rurals, but there are instances in St. Anne's, Wellenport, and Grassy where right sort of in the middle of those towns, albeit rural, they get their Canada Post mail from inside box holders. So they don't have roadside mailboxes. So in those instances, there's no choice but to throw to reach those residents. That's the only place we do. We do um, honor people's wishes if they and monitor if they don't want flyers or newspapers or they request to stop, we stop. But just looking at that like a blanket kind of canceling it completely, like the wording might then prevent around 300 rural residents from getting the package. So I just wanted sort of my word to be heard that perhaps it should be just, if there's a roadside mailbox present at the rural, the rural house, uh, you shouldn't be throwing, which we don't. So we don't have an issue with that. But like, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, no one wants to see any of those flyer packages blowing around or just making a mess or going in ditches and that. Great. Thank you, sir, uh, for your comments. Any comments or questions for um, the presenter, for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you very much. You're welcome to stay for the uh, duration of the meeting when we will deal with this under item, I think it's uh, 17. Yeah. Um, that's your discretion. Um, okay. um, Ms. Keith, is there anyone else uh, indicating that they would like to speak to this meeting on any matters in the agenda? Seeing none, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Then moving on, um, there are no appointments or presentations this evening, so we move to uh, Councillor um, Wittavine for regional councillor remarks. You're on mute, sir. That I did do, so thank you for reminding me. So uh, welcome everybody and good evening, Mayor and members of Council and, uh, and public. I'd like to start by um, highlighting a few things and starting with public works. We had uh, an interesting discussion on uh, environmental enforcement of sanitary sewers in Niagara. So this is, uh, this is done to protect our infrastructure and assets in the ground. The Niagara region has uh, four full-time staff monitoring the parameters of what is allowed to be discharged into the system. Revenue uh, is generated when companies exceed the allowable limits of these uh, sewer parameters. Um, annual fines generate between six and 700,000 and certain industries are surcharged uh, fees and agreements uh, with the knowledge of the Niagara Regional Wastewater Division and there are approximately 18 uh, industries. Um, so this item came as a request from myself to make sure we were active in monitoring the important piece of our infrastructure. And uh, second on the uh, public works was some of you may uh, be following some controversy over the procurement at the region on wastewater treatment technology. So we had an extensive discussion that took place with contractors making presentations to the committee. And it was found out that the region has worked in its best interest of the taxpayer to secure the best product for the best price. This is always a challenge as some bid bidders feel that they have a better product or price and challenge our process. So later that day, I attended the public health and community services. And um, the highlights of that meeting were that we have over 6,000 citizens waiting for a rent to geared income here in Niagara. And in, in West Lincoln, uh, our stats are that we have 86 housing providers and 15 rent supplements for our population, some, some are young and some are elderly. So just, uh, just to know what's happening in our community. And so on the long-term care front, as uh, some may know, um, there's been some upgrade care for the, our seniors that we'll be receiving for the upcoming years. Homes will provide 
a total of three hours of complete care moving uh, moving over the next four years to four hours of complete care. The challenge, of course, is to find staff to meet these targets. On another front, the um, just a quick opioid report, um, as it, it does not uh, have any boundaries, the, the region saw 625 suspected overdose response by EMS in 2020. The Niagara region saw 123 deaths over the same period of time. And um, for those who don't know, the EMS have, uh, we have special mental, we have teams that provide mental health um, care during these calls also uh, to, to offer assistance. So the next day I attended the Planning and Economic uh, Development Committee, and we had proposals to convert industrial lands to development lands. The Niagara region is moving towards an employment type land with residential being a main component of these developments. And we see that as some, um, some proposals come forward uh, to our township. Um, and also interesting discussion about the lands around the 4th Avenue uh, Hospital are being converted from a, um, to a residential employment with lands being proposed, uh, proposals of creating seniors villages adjacent to the hospital. So creating that, uh, that complete care package. So that was, uh, I, I think it was very good, uh, good proposal and a good planning decisions, um, you know, that look forward to those things. And the economic development has just completed um, a Niagara online business directory. So this is, uh, as we look at uh, restarting businesses, there's an opportunity for local businesses to promote their businesses to customers uh, to home and abroad. And those, they can go on this, uh, on the niagaracanada.ca, which, which is the site is hosted and uh, business can see uh, if they are on there, if they're not, they can, they can go on the site and uh, populate their business on there for this, uh, for this opportunity. And this was just launched uh, uh, last week. And lastly, um, I, I asked staff at Niagara Region to create a short report on the background of the bigger lagoons in Grimsby being converted to uh, a naturalized area and how may we proceed in preserving our lagoons for a natural site for our community to enjoy. So staff shared in their, uh, their working uh, with our director of planning on this matter. And I believe that this report will be coming uh, to council shortly uh, in planning. So um, thank you again for allowing me to uh, update you on this, uh, on this month. And if there's any questions, I'll do my best to respond. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Wittevin. Um, Councillor Jonker. Yeah, it's funny when you think you have a question for him and he answers it. But yeah, thanks uh, for the, re uh, the report and the, uh, the lagoon uh, part there. I was actually going to ask if we've heard anything or if anything's moving forward there. Uh, Councillor um, Riley sent some pictures of it there. Um, yeah, so good to, good to see that we're still keeping an eye on that and seeing where that goes and, and looking forward to hearing that report when it, it comes out in, in planning uh, in, the, in, in the near future. So yeah, thank you for the report. Great, great. Uh, Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess to you to our regional councillor. Uh, first, thank you so much for the report and the update. It's uh, it's always, uh, you do a pretty good job con uh, concising it all, considering how meaty it can be. So do appreciate that information. Um, one of my questions for you is a little bit in, in I guess, in light of what we're going to be talking about later with some of the uh, um, the flyer issues we've been having in our community. And I'm wondering if maybe, you know, there's a little bit of chatter online about the community kind of coming together and trying to find a way to clean up our community. Um, is, do you think that it may be through your capacity and your position, you can maybe reach out to the, the region and see if they'd be willing to, you know, donate, you know, one or two garbage tags to our community. This feels like a regular thing. I know last year when I had to clean up my street, and, uh, and that's what I had to, I chose to, and, and it was a real awful mess. I filled probably one gigantic, you know, what, whatever it's called, I guess it's called a gigantic, uh, garbage bag and half of another one. It was easily two garbage tags worth. And I would have liked not to have to, I, I went and bought tags myself, but I think there's many people in our community who probably have done the same. And, uh, and I think it would actually, you know, be inexpensive for the region to be able to reward members of our community. And I don't think it should be just, a um, 
a situation where people have to reach out for it. I'd like to see the region just kind of give us one or two tags that can just be used towards that because, you know, if they're, you know, everyone collects, you know, a bag of garbage each or half a bag of garbage each, township's not going to go and take, you know, uh, 2,800 or garbage bags or so to the, you know, the waste management area. So I was just wondering through your capacity there, if you can maybe speak to that, um, not now, but on our behalf and see if we can maybe see something in return, uh, you know, a little something extra for our taxpayers. Councilor yeah. Weaving. Uh, a quick uh, response to that uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Riley. I know we have our uh, usually a spring clean up, and and I know the schools do that, and uh, the Lions did it in the past, and they take a section of road and they clean it up, and uh, and they put the the bags on the side of the road, and uh, and and it's usually coordinated as a community cleanup, and and it would be coordinated with our uh, weekly pickup and the and the the trucks would go along and if you cleaned out your roadside ditch and you put it on the side of the road that they would pick it up. So I will look into that further and see, uh, talk to waste management to see, um, you know, if we're going to do this as a community initiative, then that would be the best way. Then there wouldn't, it wouldn't go on all summer long, uh, Councillor Riley. So I think they're willing to help us, but in a, in a kind of an organized fashion. Um, I will look into that further and then um, we can maybe make that announcement uh, through social media that uh, this week that it would be community cleanup and that we, we would have that service uh, from the region supply. Excellent. And just again, like, I think that's great. You know, if we, we have that and we go forward with that for this year, but I also think, you know, the garbage doesn't blow just, you know, a certain time of year, it goes all year round. So that's where the tags can come in handy, maybe say, you know, just before the fall time as well, unless they want to kind of continue with that concept, you know, if we do a spring clean and maybe a fall clean, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to that idea either. I just like to kind of, you know, everyone's willing to do their part. I think our community is very great that way. You saw it on social media there, people are trying to organize ways that we can all kind of, you know, do things to the best of our capacity under current circumstances uh, to tidy up our ditches and tidy up, you know, our properties and surrounding neighborhoods. But I just think it, you know, if we can do it more than once a year, I think it's just going to be better for our land and our agriculture yeah. and, uh, and the environment in general. So I do appreciate you looking into that for us. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. And, and a very good point. I know um, it's always this time of year when all the stuff emerges from the snow. And, and I know my kids uh, did it just this afternoon. Uh, they got two big bags. I, you can imagine what, uh, a quarter of a kilometer of, of uh, ditches generates, but uh, good point. Uh, anybody else uh, have a comment or question for Councillor Wittiving? Seeing good none, Councillor Wittiving, thank you very much. Is there, do you want to have a, did you want to have a last comment there? Or? Well, I was going to make a kind of an, uh, a smart comment and say that they must have found enough beer cans and beer bottles that they could go out and buy those tags if they need beer. Yeah, there you go. Probably, I know. Uh, that's probably not the answer that they want. No, to hear, so. no, but it, there is a reality to that. That's actually quite frightening. Thank you, Councillor. All right, moving right along. Uh, number uh, nine is confirmation of minutes regular from the February 22nd meeting. Councillor Jonker, you have that resolution. Yes, I do. Moved by myself that the meetings of the open session portion of the February 22nd, 2021 regular council meeting be accepted and that the confidential minutes relating to the closed session portion of the February 22nd, 2021 regular council meeting be accepted and that the meet and that the minutes remain confidential and restri restricted from public disclosure in accordance with the exemptions provided in section 239 of the municipal act. Thank you, Councillor. Can I get a seconder, please? Councilor Ganand, seconds. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, moving right along, uh, we have the council minutes special for the budget of March 1. Councilor Rayner, you have that resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move by myself that the minutes of the March 1st, 2021 special council budget meeting be accepted. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that? Councillor Jonker, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Moving right along, we have the public meetings under the Planning Act uh, for March 8. Councillor Bradrick, you have that resolution. 
Yes, moved by myself, Shelley Broderick, that the minutes of the public meetings held on March 8th, 2021, under Section 34 of the Planning Act with respect to A, Zoning Bylaw amend Amendment, Fleury Holdings, Inc., file number 1601-003-21, B, Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment, Greek Association and Mars Home, bracket Smithville West, Inc., file number 1701-001-21, file number 1601-004-21, be accepted. Thank you, Councilor Bradrick. Can I get a seconder for that? Councilor Riley, thank you. And any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? And that is any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you very much. There are no communications this evening, so we're going to move on to mayor's remarks. And I just have a couple to enter in the record. The first one is um, just very simply today was um, uh, uh, Meals on Wheels Day. Uh, very, very many elected officials across the uh, region were, were uh, doing routes and delivering uh, uh, meals to uh, seniors in our area, those who are um, uh, kind of shut in that they, uh, uh, it's kind of an annual thing. Um, last year, we were not able to do it. This year, we were able to do it. But, uh, you know, we kind of did, I did a little caravan with um, uh, Mr. Dick Van Heest, who delivers meals on Mondays and Wednesdays to our community. And we uh, met with some of the local residents who received that service. And uh, they're greatly appreciative. Um, it's, uh, it's not just a meal um, that's delivered, but there's a, you know, brighten somebody's day. And uh, this morning at 11 o'clock, a uh, flag was raised. Uh, we raised a flag at the West Lincoln Community Center um, uh, commemorating uh, Meals on Wheels Week and it'll fly till the end of the week. And uh, so that's the first thing. Um, it was a beautiful, gorgeous day to do such a thing and, and, uh, and meet some of the residents. Uh, other than that, it's actually quite straightforward to Easter. So, um, you know, we uh, will be enjoying Easter before we meet again. So just kind of want to make sure that um, we enjoy that Easter weekend. And, and with the nicer weather, there's always a temptation to kind of go a little, a little bit nuts. Uh, but we still have we're still in the red zone and so just um, a note to the public uh, that the um, restrictions that are um, collected for uh, the red uh, requirements are still in effect and um, there is concerns at the um, uh, public health with respect to um, you know uh, the variants and so we still uh, um, uh, need to be vigilant so uh, thank you for your patience uh, one year ago you know uh, it was very, um, how would you say, uh, sad, I guess it was the first uh, holiday that we, was quote unquote canceled. You can't really cancel Easter, but uh, there's a sense in which uh, there was a lot of disappointment one year ago and here we are one year later. And um, so uh, with that, uh, we have all that joy though that still comes with the season. So thank you very much. Those are my comments at this time. Are there any comments or questions? Any, okay. Then we move on to report of committee. Uh, we have the minutes of March 8. Council Riley, you have the resolution. I do, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself that the minutes of the open session portion of March 8, 2021, Planning, Building, Environmental Committee meeting be accepted and the recommendations contained therein be approved with the exception of items, and there are none at the moment, and that the confidential minutes related to the closed session portion of the March 8, 2021, Planning, Building, Environmental Committee meeting be accepted and that the minutes remain confidential and restricted from public disclosure in accordance with Section 239 of the Municipal Act. Are there any members wishing to pull any of the items from this uh, these set of minutes? Seeing none, can I get a seconder? Councillor Ganan, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Moving right along. Um, Admin Finance Fire Committee minutes on March 15. Councillor Trombetta, you have that resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move by myself that the Ministry of Administration Finance and Fire Committee meeting held on March 15, 2021 be accepted and that the recommendations contained therein be approved with the exemption of and that the confidential minutes relating to the closed session of the portion March 15, 2020 Administration Fire and Finance Committee meeting be accepted and that the minutes remain confidential and restricted 
from the public disclosure in accordance with section 239 of the Municipal Act. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other councillors wishing to pull an item? Seeing none, can I get a seconder? Councillor Bradrick, thank you very much. Um, any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question at this time. All those in favor? And that is, any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Moving right along, we have Public Works uh, Recreation of March 15. Councillor Jonker, you have that resolution. Yes, moved by myself that the minutes of the Public Works Recreation Arena Committee meeting held on March 15th, 2021 be accepted and that the recommendations contained therein be approved with the exception of items number and I see none. Uh, are there any councillors wishing to pull any items from that uh, set of minutes? Seeing none, can I get a seconder? Councillor Riley, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? I don't see any, so I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? And that is any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, items for reconsideration and motion, notice of motion to rescind there for your viewing pleasure. Um, under other business, Councillor Trombetta, thank you for bringing this forward. Um, you have a resolution here that's um, uh, that you'd like to bring forward. So I'm going to hand the floor over to Councillor Trombetta. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do have uh, this I'd like to bring forward. There's not so in wording, just so committee and I uh, mean council and uh, Mr. Mayor know that in discussions with the clerk. Uh, my, apologies. I had... my apologies. Um, I think I have to ask for a resolution to put this on the floor. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Just, yes, just... Mr. Mayor. Okay, sorry about that, Councillor Trombetta. Then, yep. then we can open it up for discussion. Thank so you. Councillor Tr Trombetta has an order, an other a business matter. Um, so uh, assuming he's going to move such a matter, can I get a seconder to put this item on the floor? Councillor Riley, thank you very much. Any comments or questions for putting this item on the floor? Seeing none, then we're going to vote to put this item on the floor. All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Councillor Trevetta, I apologize for that. Um, you may continue. A little deja vu from last week. Yeah, I know. Anyways, <laughs> moving forward, Mr. Mayor. Um, so anyways, the, the reason why uh, I put this on the floor in, in, in consultation with the clerk's department, obviously uh, yourself, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is not necessarily what I just want council to know this is not necessarily what I want to happen. I needed to put something together to put on the agenda and some wording the clerk was looking for. So please don't think this is what I'm looking for to happen with these flyers. Um, the concern that I had was from a few constituents actually prior to it going live on social media. That wasn't the constituent that put it on that called me. It wasn't the constituent that put it on social media. And it's sort of coincidental that all of a sudden it started going the same day. So I guess the sun was out, people were driving and uh, it uh, ended up on social media, but that wasn't the actual resident that uh, was calling me about it. Um, you know, we all drive our rural roads, we all drive our, our uh, urban roads and we're seeing all these, the ditches are obviously all messed up with uh, garbage and, and it's not just the flyers. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I wanna make that clear. There is beer cans, there is recycling blowing around there there's multiple things but you do tend to notice while you drive the first thing that sticks out is a pink plastic bag or a blue plastic bag you know uh, it's not the newspapers that usually newspapers are, are you know degradable but unfortunately like uh, the plastic is getting everywhere so I, I brought this for discussion uh, Mr. Mayor you know maybe we can collaboratively come together as a council Maybe this is just a bigger problem in the region than not just West Lincoln. Maybe we're starting something new. So I brought this to council to have an open discussion with uh, everyone around the horse and what, what, what we can do ideas to mitigate all the stuff that's blowing in our ditches. And I think this is one component of it. So I'll open it up to the table for, I guess, okay, so back to you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, quickly, sorry, Councilor Trombetta, can you just read the motion that you have there, the one, two, three, and then we'll get a seconder. Sure. So. Sorry again that Mr. Mr. Mayor going off there. Um, so moved by myself that the staff be hereby directed to contact those businesses that, that delivery flyers 
and newspapers to home in the rural areas of West Lincoln, and that these businesses and their uh, delivery people to be requested to immediately stop using plastic bags to deliver flyers and or newspapers at the end of driveways, and that henceforth all flyers and or newspapers be delivered in the rural areas of West Lincoln be placed in mailboxes only to reduce litter. So that's okay, there, but- a, Hang on a second there. Can I get a seconder for that? And we can open up the discussion. Councillor Riley, thank you so much. Councillor Trombetta, go ahead. Sorry, and that's there. I, I mentioned rural, but there is the urban that have ditches and get suppliers delivered as well. So again, please council, this is not yeah. just, it was just to put on the table for discussion. I think we all see that there's a problem with this. Um, I'd like to hopefully we can come up with some idea and maybe throw some fresh ideas. So Mr. Mayor, I'll put it back in your hand. Go yep. around the table and I'll come back to me for some comments later. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Councillor Trombetta. Um, so I'm gonna go to uh, Councillor Jonker. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I do um, I do like number one, that staff that reaches out to these businesses and, they, and the presenter there at the beginning of the meeting, uh, his name escapes me. Uh, Jamie Wichert. Lim yes, sorry. Um, I, I think he makes a good point. And I think, um, so number one, I, I can say, yeah, let's get staff to reach out to these businesses. And I think what we also, the number two there that they immediately stop, um, I get mine delivered by in a plastic bag and we pick it up, right? So maybe we could have staff put on the website instead of saying, okay, you got to immediately stop these from going out that we reach out to our residents and say, make sure you do pick up your, your garbage. If it's garbage, don't leave it out there as garbage, pick it up and recycle it and recycle the paper. And also if you don't want it, reach out to these businesses and let them know not to deliver it. I think, I think that would be a better approach at this moment. And yeah, placed in mailboxes only would, and I think that's where the, I, these people would be interested in working with, with us as much as they can on this too. So it's just that wording of immediately stop that that's not necessarily what I would be able to support, but I mean, we do need to educate people, remind people, and, and we can do that. I think uh, fairly cheaply by putting it on the website somehow or the other. And, and so, so um, thanks for bringing this up because yeah, Jay, I do notice it too, right? There's people with the paper rotting in the plastic, really pick up your garbage. I know, or tell them not to deliver it. I enjoy getting my flyers, but some people don't. So just communicate and clean up, right? So. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I kind of agree just with a little bit of everything that's been said. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, I almost wonder what it looks like maybe referring this back to staff to figure out what the best approach might be. But in all honesty, like if we can make an effort, I think, you know, there's many issues that is plaguing our community in terms of garbage. I, you know, the newspapers are not the only piece. I will mention, I know uh, Jamie there, you know, spoke to items on the agenda and I will mention that of all the, the newspapers and flyers we receive, the news now um, and all the flyers that come with news now always seem to make it in my mailbox. And I have a rural mailbox uh, myself. So mine's on the, my, the end of the road as well. And it seems to be uh, the other uh, news newspaper and, and their sponsors and, you know, flyers that make it on my driveway. And we do our best to, you know, get out there and grab it. And most times I think we get it, but there's obviously a few times where, you know, something's, it just hit the ground the wrong way and it blew open before we even got a chance to get there. And, you know, that's just maybe it's a part of their process they need to look at fixing. So I, I definitely am in support of, you know, having our staff reach out to them and just seeing if they can find a better method. And maybe this is a, you know, a situation where, you know, it might just be reorientation for the, the employee that is delivering it, or maybe it's a different technique and how they have to deliver it. I also kind of wonder, um, if there's a way that they can find another method than just using plastic bags, if plastic bags are one of the big culprits, you know, can they get away? We see a lot of a lot of other municipalities are getting away from things like plastic straws, and we're seeing you know more of that eco friendly approach. And maybe there's something in the the writing here that we could you know eventually come out of this and go to the region with, and maybe the region could get support and what that could look like in the future. Because you know our municipality we're pretty widespread, and it's not hard to you know have one windy day that kind of turns everybody's garbage upside down. And if you have the extra flyers and the there if we can prevent one extra uh, obstacle from happening yeah, i think it's definitely worth doing um and again i know i mentioned it to you know councillor whittabeen but I, I also wonder if there's an opportunity here to put in a request to the region to kind of have that letter of support from the municipality of 
trying to get that, you know, that complimentary, you know, garbage tag for a residence or two, uh, not two residents, but two, a complimentary uh, tag or two for residents to use for things like this. I think the, uh, if the region is responsible for the garbage, as far as my way of looking at it, then they should be resp responsible for all aspects of the garbage and including, you know, when things aren't, uh, you know, handled the way they are. I know Mother Nature has a different plan for us some days and it seems to be my garbage day happens to be one of the windier garbage days. I mean, I'm sure everybody feels that way about their own garbage day. But it's at the same time, I you would love to see something else be done. We can't ignore this. It's only going to further litter and further damage our, our lands. And, you know, when we drive through our community, we want to constantly feel proud, not just look at like the disgust that's kind of left behind. And what can we do as a community and as a region to help kind of keep our community beautiful? So I would be inclined to see if we can add some kind of part of, into the, uh, maybe a friendly amendment to see if we can send a letter out to the region and ask for that, uh, that idea of a tag and possibly they can have a discussion of what that could look like if they're not in agreement with the tag maybe they can make a recommendation how they're going to help us combat this and other municipalities uh, for the future because I think that we need to get rid of those plastic bags at some point and what well, the replacement's going to be I don't know. So Council Riley thank you very much for that uh, commentary if you want to just if you're interested you're serious about that um, why don't you just draft a sentence right now in, in a, for a moment or two, and then we can come back. We'll circle back to you. That's that's the lingo these days, circle back. I'm going to go to the uh, Madam CAO, and I'm going to get Council Rader. Madam CAO, you want to weigh in here? Yeah, I thank you very much for the opportunity just to, to discuss that, and especially the first point. My When I read it, my only concern was, um, I don't know whether we would be able to actually know all of the specific companies that do that, and I would not want to feel that we were not doing our job if we weren't able to get to all of them. So I do like the idea of perhaps posting some information on the website just to say, um, you know, these are some things you could do. You can call your, these papers and ask them to stop if you're not, if you don't want to pick them up. Um, and, and then of course that other motion, the thought that Councillor Riley had about referring it back to staff for some ideas as well. I, um, I just wanted to weigh in here if I could just indulge me for a second, but I know that um, uh, the Tor Star paper, uh, Metroland uh, Tor Star paper, um, no longer has an office in, um, in Niagara. If you call, uh, you actually get um, an offshore uh, call center and, and uh, that's kind of a game changer. It just happened only a couple of weeks ago. And so if you don't want these flyers, you call, I, I don't know, it doesn't sound doesn't sound really legitimate for me, but I'm going to go to Council Rayner. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a, there's a number of issues here, I guess. Um, number one, um, I get the Hamilton Spectator. It's covered in plastic, and on wet days or snowy days, it's actually got double plastic. Uh, it's thrown on my driveway. Um, some winters, it gets blown into the ditch. I can't find it. And in the spring, I have to pull it out and they're stocking wet, but they're, they're my mess. I clean it up. I get rid of it. Um, I go for a three to four kilometer walk every morning with my dog. So I cover probably six to eight kilometers of ditches. I have yet to find a flyer or anything covered in plastic in a ditch, but I can tell you beer cans, Tim Horton cups coming out of your yin yang uh, and even with the introduction of the new ANW, I brought it to the attention of council uh, a number of months ago that I knew we had a new restaurant in town because I've got their garbage in my ditch, including the receipt from whoever bought it. Um, so there's two phases here. There's the flyer one. When I used to get the flyers, I don't get the flyers. I don't get news now. I don't get anything put in my mailbox or thrown in my driveway. I used to in the other property. Uh, and a lot of times the flyers were crammed into my mailbox. They weren't thrown in the, in the ro on the road. And yet other times they were. So I don't know the consistencies. I just know there was lots of times when there wasn't a space for the post office to put letters in because it was just full of flyers. But there's, there's two parts of this. There's the flyer section, which you might be able to control to some extent. But then there's places, like I said, the, the lady comes from Hamilton to deliver the Hamilton Spectator. I don't know what you expect her to put them in the box. I don't think she could do that. Uh, the other part is all the cans, the bottles and everything else. Now, I tried to address that, I don't know, 15 or more years ago with council when I believe um, Jason's mom was the mayor. And I suggested that we put a, a littering sign up 
oh, when I go to Hawaii, there's signs everywhere, a dollar fine for living. And believe me, that's enforced because it's gorgeous there and they don't want garbage anywhere and they don't tolerate, they don't even tolerate blowing a horn. You, people yell at you. So um, I, they agreed to put a $500 fine. And when you come into the township of West Lincoln, it says about no littering and $500 fine. But I would bet a fair bit of money that I don't think a police officer in the last 15 years has laid a littering charge in the township of West Lincoln. But let me tell you, I can make a fair buck just picking up beer cans in the ditch. So littering is extremely common. It hasn't been deterred by that sign. I don't know how you're going to control cans, bottles, Tim Horton, A&W garbage in our ditches. But flyers is a start. But flyers is something a lot easier to control because you're basically going one or two sources as compared to 500 people through the township that rather throw their garbage in the ditch than take it home and properly dispose of it. So I don't really know how much we're really going to gain, but flyers, as I meant to say in the beginning, is not an issue in my area. I have, I have yet to see one in the ditch. Um, so I know there's areas that are bad, especially people who don't uh, or have moved away or something. You go by, there's eight or 10 of them in the driveway. You know, the person doesn't live there anymore. Uh, but that's really the only telltale sign um, other than that, it's it's not that common out in my area. It's it's everything else but that. No, I don't know what, what we can hey, do. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rayner. I I know I, you're absolutely right. And and there's there's not just one culprit, but uh, and uh, it's going to be. And as Ry uh, Councillor Riley has pointed out, it's going to be a collective effort. Sometimes you got to bite the bullet and just clean out your ditches. And and it's uh, it's it's uh, it's there's a corporate communal responsibility there as well. We wish it wasn't so, but it is. So I'm going to go to Councillor Bradrick uh, and then I'm going to go to Councillor Trombetta. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Uh, one of the thoughts that I had was um, perhaps maybe the township staff looking at initiatives that we as a township could take to promote um, people opting out of the, uh, the flyer dis distribution. So perhaps maybe stickers that could be available for pickup to be put on people's mailboxes. Some communities I've read that have um, created a bylaw where if uh, um, somebody has a sticker on their mailbox and they still get a, a flyer delivery, then that is something that's in breach of that particular bylaw. Uh, certainly would leave that up to staff and their expertise to look at various options. Um, I do think that the uh, flyers in the ditch are worse this year. Uh, certainly in, in my 30 something years of being in this community, I don't know if it was the particular type of winter that we had, um, or maybe it's different staff that are delivering the flyers that aren't maybe doing as good of a job as, as people in the past, but it does seem to be worse this year, for sure. And that's uh, all my comments. Thank you, uh, Council Bradrick. Uh, uh, Council Ganan, I'm gonna ask you just if you wanna go ahead of Council Trombetta. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a couple of points to make too. I was a little bit um, hesitant about the uh, asking them to stop using plastic bags. Um, I know the plastic is bad and we've certainly had it in town as well, everywhere, um, blowing down the roads, um, especially on recy recycling days. Um, so one point I think is that I think we need to uh, be encouraging people to package their plastic correctly, at least in town. I, I think Councillor Roddy's right. We have a very, very windy days always. And I think people, some people are actually trying to put those in their recycling but they're flimsy and they're light and they get blowing around. Whereas we are actually asked to package all the, that plastic inside one plastic bag and tie that and put it with newspaper. So I think um, getting the word out again about proper recycling is really critical. But back to plastic versus um, newspaper, John and I were with the Lions Club where we used to do the cleanups prior to those uh, papers being packaged in plastic. And we just found bundles of papers in the ditches, you know, piles still lumped together, um, weeks old, months old, um, almost a year old uh, since the last cleanup in some cases when we were only doing it around Earth Day in April. And um, 
And what those do then is catch in people's as they loosen off over time, they're either a wet, soggy mess that it does eventually, I guess, disintegrate, which is a plus over the plastic, but they're also caught in bushes and in trees. And, you know, so the blowing papers all over the township was not an ideal solution either. Um, getting people, trying to get people on board to helping to clean up and tidy up, I think is probably the best bet. Um, to what Councillor Rayner was saying about the spectator, we also get it in town. We have just a short driveway compared to what his country driveway would be, but it's still thrown at the end of our driveway and still gets lost in the bushes and uh, under the snow and whatever happens along the way. But it is also coming in plastic. But I've noticed the last week or two, they've used a heavier plastic. So that's now suitable to put other plastic into, to put into recycling. So it's a bit of a plus. So maybe they have already had lots of complaints about what was going on with the Spectator, which is a daily newspaper. Was So much more plastic. Um, easily you saw it blowing down the road um, over and over and over again after that newspaper had been delivered. So um, I think that that overall, there's no really simple, easy solution. I think that all the different things that people have suggested are all worthwhile. And we might have to come up with some kind of an education plan um, through the website, through working with the region, through social media and encouraging people to get involved and to help clean up. Um, I, I don't see that there's sort of one simple solution that will work for this stuff. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'm going to go to Councillor Trombetta now for a second time. Maybe bring yeah. us up here, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, like I mentioned, a lot of good ideas were thrown around the table uh, just uh, or around the Zoom right now. Uh, you know, even Councillor Braddock opened my eyes about the, you know, the stickers. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great idea that's, uh, that could be helpful to a lot of residents. You know, I, I, again, this was just something quickly crafted with me and the clerk, and, you know, it wasn't for what I wanted. I think this should go back to staff. Um, I, I'm not in so in favor of putting the flyers in the mailbox because I've had residents complain that all the flyers get jammed and they lose their mail because you know the actual stuff that's important gets stuck in between there or it gets pushed out or what. So you don't want to jam mailbox and then you're throwing flyers out and you've lost a, a letter that's really of importance. So, um, you know, I, again, I, I, you're driving down and it could be it could be directed to some drivers. Some drivers are just throwing them at the mailboxes. Some drivers are just throwing them at the driveways, right? So again, I think this should go back to staff. Um, like obviously I'd like to withdraw all these points, but again, I just put it on the agenda just for it to open a, a wholesome discussion. So I think it should go back to staff to come up. I don't know if we have to go to Brian to get a bylaw to actually, you know, it, 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 to, to coincide with this. I'm not sure, but this is where it needs to go back to the staff for some discussion. So and uh, from a chair, from a chair's perspective, um, do I hear you saying let's refer this to staff and come back in the next cycle? What do you? It's so the next cycle of council. Well, um, I, 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 I guess I could imagine this coming back. Um, planning might be a little bit soon, but maybe come back to admin committee um, in the next cycle, in in the April cycle, admin committee. So, sure. I, 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 if, if that's the will of council, Mr. Mayor, I'm good with that. Okay. I, I'm just, I, I'm asking uh, from a, yeah. from a chair's perspective, Madam uh, CAO, is that, is that um, you're, uh, we're kicking it back, back to your, into your house. What, what do you, what say you? Well, actually I have a, a I think a, a, maybe a potentially good solution. We have a, a green team that we formed um, that we haven't actually met in for a little while and so maybe this is something I could bring to that group and we could come up with some strategies and it might be some it might be a little bit of of um social media or education and training and um and I guess it's up to council whether or not you just want to give it to us to try to do something or do we need to come back and tell you what we're going to do so Councillor Trombetta would you want to refer that to the green team I would, I would refer to the green team, but ho hopefully they can bounce some ideas back to us so we can hear, so we can yeah, relay the message like back to our them. residents. So. so we'll refer to the green team and, and have them report back when ready, something like okay. that. Okay, can, can, I get a, can I get a seconder on that? Councillor Riley, and since it's a referral, there's no discussion, so I'll just call the question at this time. All those in favor? And that's carried, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor, for bringing the discussion forward, and I thought it was quite fulsome and, and productive. All right, moving on. 
Uh, at this time, we have bylaws. Councilor Bradrick, uh, you have the resolution for, for bylaws this week, this time. Thank you. Let me just find it here. Oh, moved by myself, Councilor Shelley Bradrick, that leave be granted to introduce bylaws number 2021 18, 2021-19, 2021-20, 2021-21, 2021-22, 2021-23, 2021-25, 2021-26, and 2021-27, and that the same shall be considered to have been read uh, first, second and third time with one reading and are hereby adopted. And that the mayor and clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign and affix the corporate seal thereto any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bradrick. Can I get a seconder for bylaws? Councillor Ganan, thank you. Any comments or questions on uh, bylaws? Uh, Councilor Riley. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, can we vote on 2021-18 uh, separately? Yep, we'll pull 2021-18 separately. So on the balance, seeing no more comments on the balance, everything but 2021-18, all those in favor? And that's carried. Um, uh, on uh, 2020, and, and just, an aside here, I forgot two items. I will ask your council remarks right after this, and I will ask if there are any items of new business that need immediate attention. But for now, we're gonna go bylaw 2021-18 uh, by itself. Councilor, uh, sorry, Madam Clerk, are you, uh, uh, you're probably frantically getting a, um, a motion ready that we just um, do that one separately? I wait your word. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, we can uh, vote on it separately. It would be um, basically the same uh, resolution as previous, only we're pulling, um, it would just be 2021 eight, 18. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, then it would be open up for discussion, sorry. Yeah. So um, all, um, I'm looking for a mover of 2021-18, Councillor Jonker, a seconder please. Seconder, please. Councilor Riley, good. Uh, um, so now we have an opportunity to discuss 2021-18. Councilor Riley, go, go ahead. I won't belabor. I don't need to discuss it. I'm just going to oppose it. So Okay. All right. Then uh, I'm going to, are there any other comments or questions? All those uh, in favor? And those opposed? Councilor Riley, okay, and so noted. That is carried. Thank you very much. And with my apologies, I'm going to go to members of the council to give council remarks. Are there any councillors wishing to get items? Thank you, Councilor Ganan. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thought you might have included this in your remarks, um, but I thought that I would take this opportunity, if you did not, to report on the success of the pancake supper um, was that was at Silverdale. So the Silverdale um, Hall ran a fundraising dinner on um, St. Patrick's Day, pancakes on St. Patrick's Day. But anyway, it was to support the Niagara Christian Cleaners. And I saw actually on a, a report from Pete Waringa today saying that they made close to $11,000 is what he said. So there were some very generous pancake eaters, um, which when I was asked how were they, it was sort of, well, by the time you take pancakes and sausage home and <laughs> sit down to eat them, they're sort of, However, I was just glad that I was in front of Councillor Yonker and not behind Councillor Jonker, who had a huge order, and so that I didn't have to wait for his to go through. And uh, the second item that I wanted to mention is just that coming up on April the 2nd is a blood donor clinic, and uh, they are still looking for blood donors, so hopefully if somebody's watching this, um, I mention it especially because it's Good Friday, and the blood donor clinic is in the morning and into the early afternoon, so between 9 and 2. And so um, hopefully uh, people who are able to give blood will so do. So thank you, that's all. Thank you, Councillor Ganan. Any other councillors wishing to get any items? Okay. Oh, Councillor Jonker, go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, I, I would just have to say that uh, the shorter drive uh, was better for the pancakes than probably going all the way back to Smithville. So just in fairness, too. But yeah, it is one of those breakfasts are always tough to do. And, and to, for them to do a to do that as a drive through is, is quite something. And I did feel kind of bad looking in the mirror, seeing how many people were behind us. But uh, I think they did quite well and it was neat to see. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to picking up their uh, dryer. I hope hopefully next week the new dryer gets delivered and, and they can uh, up their production there. So looking forward to uh, getting that done. So. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Jonker. Anyone else? Seeing none, then uh, we're going to move on to, are there any items of new business uh, that require immediate attention or direction? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, then I am pleased to declare this meeting adjourned at the hour of 8 19. Thank you very much, everyone.